Welcome to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we're going to take a look at the Nordic Track Grand Tour Pro. So in the Grand Tour lineup, Nordic Track has two bikes, the Grand Tour and the Grand Tour Pro. So this is the slightly upgraded model. It comes with 10% incline and decline. So the bike will pivot and tilt up and down 10%. It has iFit free for the first year. The Grand Tour Pro comes with a very nice 10 inch touchscreen and an impressive 10 year frame warranty. So let's take a look at the overall construction. The Grand Tour Pro is a really sturdy bike. The total footprint is 57.5 inches long. It's 62 inches high to the top of this tablet holder and only about 23 and a half inches wide. So it doesn't take up much room with the width. It has a nice V-shaped design. So you'll see this is a little different than, than studio bikes where the seat and the handlebars kind of incline parallel to each other. You'll notice on this one, the higher we incline it, the more you get that V position, which just kind of gives you more upper body span. And this frame works really well for taller people. So I like the V-shaped design. You've got a sturdy steel frame down here. You can see you've got two support beams underneath the frame and then oversized levelers, both at the front and the back. On the front, you've got these nice large transport wheels. So if I pick the bike up, and pivot it so that it, it engages those wheels. You can roll it forward and back. And then back here on the rear stabilizer, you've got two adjustable levelers, and these are nice and large. You can kind of twist them so that that bike doesn't rock when it's on your floor. You have really nice wide pedals right here. So these pedals do not have a clip-in. It's just a wide textured surface, surface with a, an adjustable strap over the top. So they work for pretty much any size shoe and any kind of athletic shoe. You don't need spin shoes for this bike. The seat, as you'll notice, is also very wide and padded, tapered here at the nose and contoured for comfort. The seat cannot be swapped out, but it's very comfortable to sit on. So it gives you um, lots of options as far as how you're gonna use it. You don't have to have biking shorts and you don't have to have cycling shoes. This does have that 10% incline and decline. So you can see back here, you've got your incline, incline arm that will lift and tilt the bike right here on the pivot point. And that was just kind of a nice feature. So as you ride in an iFit program, it's automated. So the incline and decline will adjust automatically for you. You can override that if you want to at any point, but it just kind of makes it fun and it makes those outdoor routes feel more realistic. This has a 16 pound flywheel up here at the front housed in this protective plastic casing. And you've got a nice protective shield over your whole drivetrain. So you won't get dust and stuff uh, in the belt drive or the flywheel. It has silent magnetic resistance, which means that the bike does not make any noise when you're pedaling. Regardless of the resistance level that you're at, it's not going to um, squeak or, or make any noise because there's no friction points with magnetic resistance. You have 26 digital resistance levels, so lots of different options as far as your resistance, and that, 20, that level 26 gets pretty heavy. So nice resistance on this. And you also have several different areas where you can adjust. Unlike other bikes, you have incline and decline on the end of the handlebars, as well as speed on the right, on the console, and then down at the base of the console. So lots of different options as far as adjusting that. The max user weight on this bike is 375 pounds. So it will support a pretty impressive weight capacity. And it's a great option for users who uh, maybe have limited mobility. The step over height right here isn't bad and it is comfortable to sit on. So for those people who prefer to sit while exercising, want to do something low impact, that's relatively easy to get on and off with a comfortable seat, this is a great option. Let's take a look at the geometry on the Grand Tour Pro. Nordic Track doesn't list specifically a height range that this bike would accommodate, but it has a lot of adjustment points. So on any given spin bike or indoor exercise bike, it will typically have three to four adjustment points. And those are the areas in which you can adjust the bike fit to work for different size riders. This one has four, which means the seat moves up and down as well as forward and back. 
the handlebars also move up and down as well as forward and back. So four adjustment points is kind of what we recommend for finding the perfect fit. These days, a lot of bikes do not have handlebars that adjust forward and aft because they have a screen attached. So even on some of your higher end bikes, you'll only see three adjustment points, but this one does give you four. So the geometry of it, as you can see, I have the seat raised to its highest point. That gives you a really nice long leg span here. And you always want to measure your span at the bottom of the pedal stroke. So you take that pedal stroke all the way down to where your bottom foot is, and that is where you measure your leg span. From the top of the seat to the floor, I have measured this at 47 inches high. When I drop it all the way down, and I'll demonstrate how to do that, you just unscrew your knob and then pull the lever out. When I drop it all the way down, wait, make sure it clicks and then screw it back in. So this lowest level right here is 34 inches. So you have 34 inches all the way up to 47, which really gives you a nice range for adjustment. The handlebars are very similar. They have a knob right here. You just unscrew it. You got a, a pin and groove right here. Pull that pin out and you have these preset notches. Drop it all the way down and it will drop to 35 inches. One thing, when you do that, take your weights off. So set the weights to the side before you attempt to move your handlebars. And then just like the saddle, pull it out and drop it down until it clicks and then lock it back in, okay? So you can find the adjustment that works for you. The handlebars drop to 35 inches and they raise to about 43 inches. The span between the two. If I take this saddle and open it all the way up, so that's all the way back and I have the handlebars all the way forward, your span right here is about 23 inches long. If I pull the seat all the way in and I pull the handlebars all the way in, it's only, it's only about a foot, so it's not very much. But what this does is it allows you to find the perfect fit for you. Once you have adjusted your bike where you want it, always make sure that you tighten those knobs back up. Because even though they have the notches on the seat and the handlebars, you still wanna make sure that it's fully tightened for security so that it doesn't rock and wiggle while you're riding. So I'll just show you that. There's not notches on the seat or the handlebars, those just, those just slide, but these are weight bearing. So you do have the notches here. So just make sure you're all fully tightened when you wanna get on your bike. And then once you've finished adjusting, put those weights back on. Your step over height to this point is about 21 inches. So as I mentioned, it's not too high, but it does require a little bit of knee mobility to get over. And your span down here at the bottom, once again, is another about 12 inches. So you have about a 12 inch clearance between the seat post and the handlebar post. The Nordic Track Grand Tour Pro comes with a 10 year warranty on the frame, two years for parts and one year for labor. Let's take a look at the console and the overall cockpit layout. So um, as I mentioned, you have three different areas where you can adjust both speed and incline on the Grand Tour Pro. You've got your preset buttons right here and it will automatically jump to that level on that button. You also have an incline and decline button as well as a resistance button. Resistance is on the right, incline and decline is on the left. And then you have an, an additional adjustment here on the end of your grip. These are preset, so they'll just jump to whatever level that is. And then the incline or decline will take you by just one metric. So if you're at a flat road, it'll take you up one and then two and then three and then four. So these are just one metric interval each. And the same is true with resistance. There's no intermediary levels. So it's not 1.1 or 1.2. It just jumps you by a full metric. One, two, three, four, till you get to level 26 on your resistance. You've got a max 10% incline and a negative 10% decline. So having three different areas where you can adjust the, in, the resistance or, or incline is kind of cool. The other thing you'll notice is I really like this 10 inch touchscreen. When I'm looking at a touchscreen, you can see the seven inch, but it can be harder to uh, press the buttons because it's just smaller. I kind of like 10 inches and above. Like this is kind of my minimum as far as, as what works, especially for functionality. You can see the screen does, in, does pivot right here so that you can kind of reduce overhead glare, find the right visibility for you. There's also a nice 
lip right here with just a little bit of a ledge. So if you have a phone, you can set that off to the side. If you wanted to, you could set an iPad here, but it will block your screen. So that's something to be aware of. But it does include this adjustable tablet holder here at the top. It swivels side to side, pivots up and down, and has an adjustable clip. So if I wanna view something on my tablet, I can just stick it here, find the right height, and then I'm able to see it from where I'm sitting. Uh, so that's really nice if you wanna watch Netflix, read a book, watch your own personal video, you know, whatever. You've got that tablet right there uh, for easy visibility. So you do have speakers here and you've got an aux port. So if I plug an aux cord into my phone and then plug it into the machine, I can play music through the speakers and it also allows me to hear the volume from the iFit videos. Down here, you do have a single fan and it does pivot just a little bit. A fan is a really nice feature on pretty much any exercise equipment. I especially like it on a bike because you are sit seated in one position and can't really move around. The fan has four different adjustments. So you can do low and it will show up on the screen, medium, high, and then the fourth one is your auto setting. So because I'm not pedaling, it will turn it off right now because I'm not doing anything. So you can see it's on auto. And then I'll take it down again just to turn it off. So it is a nice powered fan. I'm impressed with this fan and I do like how you can pivot it to just kind of hit chest height wherever you want. Nordic Track does include three pound weights that come with the Grand Tour Pro and they just sit right here in a little notched tray at the front. So those are easy to reach. And then back behind the saddle, you do have two nice big water bottle cup holders. So that's really nice. You can just reach behind you, grab your water bottle and tuck it back there. The Nordic Track Grand Tour Pro comes with 35 preloaded workouts. So when you first purchase your bike, you'll get iFit free for a year and you do have to log in and create your own profile. And that kind of gives you the op option to view all the videos and see if you like it. And then at the end of that first year, if you determine that you don't want to continue with iFit, you still have 35 onboard workouts that will work with this machine. So that's really nice. And then let me show you just uh, the way that iFit works. So it will automatically pull up some of the new featured rides and workouts. You've got an outdoor one, uh, studio sprints and hill climbs, and then studio um, improve your average. If you want to go to the library, you can click right here. So here's your workout library. And the classes are kind of organized by series or the type of class that it is. So you've got power and performance cycle series here at the top, total body hit series for both on the bike and a little bit of off the bike, lean and fit, and then it'll go into different locations. So right down here, you've got the tour of Utah which is an outdoor road ride that they've divided into different stages. So you can ride those stages. And then down here, we've got just a few more studio rides. So you can see these ones that are more graph based. These are your preloaded workouts. So you've got a few that are just maps that you can ride different places in the world. So this is somewhere in Norway. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. This is uh, in Lake Como, Italy. So I can pull that up and it will just show me a workout as I ride through Lake Como. And like your iFit workouts, it gives you kind of an overview here, comments and incline. So I'm not gonna start that one. But then down here, your preloaded workouts are more graph based. So you've got interval workouts where that heart rate goes up and down. Speed, where you're, you wanna uh, work through different speed adjustments and calorie burn. So your preloaded workouts show up down at the bottom of your iFit menu. But like, like you can see, you've got really a lot of an expansive iFit library right here. iFit also includes the option to create your own route. So if you are training for something and you wanna create your own route, you can go into Google Maps. It will automatically pull up a preset location, but you can just go in anywhere in the world. This is Playa del Carmen, Mexico, and you can just kind of map that out and then save it and then write it whenever you want. So I wanna exit Draw Maps. It brings me back here. It also has a calendar of workouts that you've done so it keeps track of your, your metrics according to your profile. So here you can see all the different workouts that I've done um, in the last few days, and then it takes you back home. So right there, that, those are your options as far as I fit. And you, as you can see, the 10 inch touchscreen is really nice. If I wanna go to manual start, it's up here on the right. It will automatically bring up a track. You can adjust the length of your warm up and cool down if you want. And this will just show you a track. So let's say I wanna take my resistance all the way up to 24. You can hear like 
that very, very quiet sound as the resistance adjusts. And then I can take the incline up to 10. It's very quiet. This is probably one of the quietest bikes as far as motor noise and stuff like that. So um, if you're doing a manual workout, you can just kind of set it wherever you want, readjust it. And at the end, you have the option of saving your manual workout. If you create one that you really like and you want to do it again, you can name it and save it and then go back in and, and do that later. So let me demonstrate real quick one of the iFit workouts. Here's a map view of the route. And up here at the top, my display bar just kind of lets me know incline watts, time, cadence, and resistance. So she's gonna tell us where we're gonna ride and you can see really nice videography right here in, in iFit. I love the outdoor routes. So there it is. It automatically adjusted my resistance to 16 because that's kind of um, the difficulty right here. And then as she rides, the incline will adjust as well. Let me demonstrate the volume. So I can, I can adjust the volume either on the screen or I can adjust it down here. Workout four of the series. So the this is... State ride. Sometimes these rides can be considered a little bit less, less interesting. So that's your max volume. It goes really loud. And you can see it's adjusting the incline. Even as I'm playing with the volume, it will still adjust the incline. It has three different settings. So I can adjust the music. There's music in every class and it just kind of shows in the background or if you don't want the music, which I usually don't, you can turn it all the way down and turn the trainer up. And then when I adjust that master volume, it maintains the balance that I've set between the trainer and the music. Let's say I'm riding along and I find this resistance to be too challenging. So I'm gonna drop it a little bit down to resistance level 13. You can see this icon shows up here in the corner called follow trainer. So that means that I've overridden the automated resistance. My incline will still adjust unless I override that one as well. So if I want to get back to the automated resistance, I just hit follow trainer and then it will reset to whatever she has. So it's the same with incline. It's going to pull us up to 4% incline, but let's say that's too steep for me. So I'm going to drop us back down to a zero. Once again, I get the follow trainer icon. So you can override the automated, you can override the automated controls separately. So I can manually control the resistance, but stay with the incline, the preset incline, or I can adjust the incline, but stay with the preset resistance. So you can do either one. And then if you hit follow trainer, it will automatically set you back with whatever you were. That just kind of gives you an overview of iFit and a general idea of the cockpit layout design, how the bike functions, how it feels and how it sounds. Let's take a look at the functionality of the Grand Tour Pro. So as I mentioned, you have a 16 pound flywheel here. Flywheel weights go up to like 50 pounds for a commercial cycle that you would find at a gym. A lot of your high-end studio cycles will have about a 30 pound flywheel. So a 16 pound flywheel is a little on the light side. There's advantages and disadvantages to that. One of the advantages is that your pedals will not keep spinning. So you don't have to worry about getting off the bike quickly and having those pedals hit you in the shin. As soon as you stop pedaling, they will stop moving, which is a real nice safety feature. The only thing that can sometimes be an issue with an underweighted flywheel or just a lighter flywheel is when you're in the saddle, it's very smooth and you've got a nice pedal motion right here. If you stand up, because you don't have momentum from inertia from that spinning flywheel, it can feel a little heavy on the downward stroke. So just be aware of that with that 16 pound flywheel, but it is nice and feels nice and, and smooth and fluid when you're sitting in the saddle. Also, you'll notice when I stop pedaling, those pedals stop, they don't keep going, which once again is a nice safety feature. You've got a belt drive system in there, which is very quiet and your silent magnetic resistance doesn't make any noise regardless of the resistance level you're on. So let me demonstrate real quick. Right now I'm on resistance level one and I'm gonna take it up to 18. So it's on almost instant adjustment because all that happens is those magnets move a little closer to the flywheel to create more resistance, but there's no more noise. So I'll take it all the way to 26.
So I can feel that resistance, but it doesn't create any more noise. So this is all the noise that you're going to have from pedaling. The incline and decline motor does make a little bit of noise, but it's only while it's adjusting. So right now I'm at zero. Let's take it to four. You can see it adjusts really smoothly and it's very quiet. I'll take it all the way up to 10. Watch that bike frame pivot. I can keep cycling. There's no hiccup. So this is your 10% incline. I'll drop it all the way down to negative 10. So there you go, that's the full decline. I'm leaning forward, have to adjust my body just a little bit, but there really is minimal motor noise. And the beeping that you hear is only when you hit a button. So if I'm in an automated iFit workout and it automatically adjusts for me, there's no beeping because I don't hit the button. So I'll take it back up to zero, keep pedaling, And it'll bring it back up to that zero incline flat grade. It really is very smooth. So you've got a nice comfortable saddle right here with good padding and wide support for your tailbone. It's also a little bit contoured in the back and a nice narrow tapered nose so that you can get a nice comfortable pedal stroke without too many friction points. The handlebar span right here is about 21 inches wide. And the only thing I don't love is these powder coated handlebars don't have any padding and these corner plastic pieces aren't super soft. They're fine and they're sweat resistant, but there isn't the slightly spongy cushion that you sometimes find on other studio bikes. So that's one thing to be aware of. The other thing is typically when you measure a bike fit, you measure to the front handlebar, but because you have to lean forward if you want to reach these controls on the end of the grip, you might have to pull your handlebars in just a little closer than you're used to if you want to access these controls down here at the end. You don't need to because you also have controls right here on the lower part of the console, which are, which are an easy reach. But these handlebars are actually quite long and angle away from you in such a way that you might have to pull that horizontal bar in just a little bit more than you would typically do to reach those elongated grips. But when you're out here, if you're on a long ride, really working hard, you're into a groove, it's nice to be able to incline forward just a little bit and hinge at the torso. So that's kind of a general overview of functionality. As you can see, the Nordic Track Grand Tour Pro is an impressive upright studio cycle. It really has a sturdy frame. It will support up to 375 pounds of user weight. It has four adjustment points, so you can really tailor that bike fit just how you like it. It comes with a very nice 10 inch touchscreen, which I really like. It has that incline and decline. It will incline to a 10% grade, decline to a negative 10% grade. It does have the silent magnetic resistance, so it's a very quiet bike to ride comes free with iFit for one year and has an impressive 10 year frame warranty. For a detailed written review, make sure and check us out at treadmillreviewguru.com. We have pictures and uh, more depth information about the bike and make sure and click the link below for current pricing. And if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up and take just a minute to subscribe.